Hello, everyone, and this is Miko Santos, and welcome to There's a Glitch podcast. And for today's episode, we're talking about a lot of people are discussing about AI, like ChatGPT, Bard. So, uh, there's a lot of AI tools now that was um, coming up. Every, I think every 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 day there's a, like a story about AI overcoming, um, helping our daily life so for today's episode we would having a chat with charles darwin university associate professor in education dr john mason hello dr jason welcome to the hi. show yeah hi, hi there Mika. how are you i'm a pleased to be here so first question what do you do so you're associate professor in education in charles darwin university can you tell us about yourself Okay, so I've, I've been up here in Darwin um, about 11 years um, and uh, my role here uh, is that uh, I, uh, I'm a lecturer and a researcher in education um, and I specialise in the application of digital technologies in education, also with uh, teaching and learning and research. Thank you so much. First, first question I have for you is that, is this in relation with the AI as well? How are search aging tools such as like a Google being affected with this um, artificial intelligence? Oh, well, that's a great question, uh, Miko. Actually, my, from where I sit, I, I see a huge impact taking place. And I, I think it's been gestating for some years. It's, it, it, it's been going to happen for, for some years. Google, um, all the search engines have been a, a dominant force in the way that the web has evolved and they were really important in the early years of the web. It, you know, they were the killer app, you know, the, um, the, the search engines were so powerful. I had a wonderful experience when we all uh, got acquainted with the web. Um, and, we, you know, they're our default uh, tool for looking things up and they're incredibly, incredibly powerful and we all love them. Um, but, but in a way, they're, they're quite limited because they really are only configured to to search on an information space they're looking for the aboutness of, of, of things and we can find lots of really cool stuff really quickly um, at, at wonderful for education um, to a point um, that, that google and bing all, all these tools um, they don't the, up until now up until recently they haven't really uh, been good at dealing with um, complex questions and questions that by the way that little kids ask you know little kids will ask you a why question you know when they're trying to understand the world so if we ask a question um why are the israelis and the palestinians locked in conflict <laughs> you put that into google or Bing, and you know you're going to get you know a, a, a mess of information in, in in response because it's all informational it's not clearly articulated and it takes time to interrogate further and to get to the roots of, of, of you know, um, um, a reasonable answer that satisfies you. And, and so uh, <clears throat> what's happening with AI is that we're moving into a new explanational space, a dialogic space. And so Google, all the search engines are, are kind of a, they present an in and out experience um, when, when we're interacting with the web it's quick and it's over in no time okay what what the what the new tools are offering us is an opportunity to engage and, and to interrogate further and to have dialogue to have conversation this is why Microsoft in, in a way have have, have called their new AI enabled uh, office tools a, a, a co-pilot you know because there's this we're in this thing together. So I, I think this is the big impact that is happening and we're going to see a decline, I think. Search engines will still, still be around, but there's going to be a decline in, in their dominance. So you already said about uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft is one of the um, investors on ChatGPT and yes. we'll see in, in, in the news now that Microsoft or Google also starting putting their own AI. What, what do you think about this and how will AI change the search? Well, 
AI is going to be enabled across all domains, not 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 just search, um, and, and it, it it's helping us uh, in in so many different domains. And there's a there's an upside story to tell about AI and and, and the wonderful things it can it is already delivering and what it can to deliver um, uh, for humanity going forward. You know, but um, it, the the scary side of it is that it's it, it's kind of uh, uh, unleashed a capability that we. we we have we don't fully understand, and and it it, it can have a, a reflexive kind of impact back on the way that um, shapes the way that we engage with with the digital environment. Uh, so this can be both both enabling and destructive, and we we, we haven't yet really witnessed uh, what the scope of the destructive potential is. But we're already sitting on the on on the. On, on the verge of cyber warfare anyway. Um, w- w- without I, a, a AI, there's, pl- there's plenty of activity going on out there um, with the misuse of data and the hacking of systems. Um, w- we all know these stories. Uh, I, I just su- suspect that, that with AI in the mix, um, uh, you know, things are going to be uh, playing out at a whole new level again. Since AI is coming up no- nowadays, what do you think is this is one of the controversial question about the chat gpt that will affect the academic integrity of of the student <clears throat> while using the this ai tools yeah well you know that's the first panic button that all the all the educators and the academics have hit oh academic integrity that's the other ai by the way academic integrity um, um uh and, and by the way, there's there's other AIs in, in, in the mix there. I, I see um, augmented intelligence is another way of thinking about these new capabilities. Um, but you know, this uh, academic integrity has been um, uh, has been a problem for some time. Contract cheating has has been out there, and I think the statistics are, are revealing that uh, at least ten percent of of our higher education students cheat and, and, and make use of cheating services anyway. Um, and, and what happens with, with this new capability is that uh, it makes uh, uh, the, the production of text so much easier, so, so much easier. And, and so, yes, it's reasonable that educators are panicking a, a, about all of this, but I think the panic um, um, is, is going much deeper than that because we're needing to re- reevaluate the whole nature of, of, of teaching and learning and education and research and the fact that we have got these powerful new tools that, that can help us um, in the production of text and in, 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 in executing a whole range of, of um, activities on, on, online that, that can make life easier, can make life more complicated too. But but what's really um, what what's really um, capturing my uh, attention at the moment is that um, with these tools we get access we, we we can produce really well formed text really quite quickly um, and it's and it looks good um, a lot of the time it it can look bland um, um, but the big problem with it is it's not necessarily always accurate and it's not necessarily um, always true, you know, and so uh, th- there's a new challenge for critical thinking um, in education. This 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 is the fundamental challenge, and I think it's all about uh, developing questioning schools uh, in education. And it's it's about being able to uh, not just detect um, misinformation, but but really. Uh, <laughs> being able to to scrutinise um, very plausible texts um, in a way that we need uh, we need to also validate them. How are we going to validate uh, some some of this stuff? So so the processes of investigation of, of of finding things out, of checking things, of validating information um, uh, is is probably going to be a little bit more complex than it is at the moment, and so. Um, I, I do see a, 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 rev- a new revolution taking place in education, uh, and I do think that what's taking place um, as a consequence of these new AI tools is as at least profound as the invention of the web itself. Do you think, uh, Dr. Mason, 
uh, the academic uh, space should embrace this AI tools? Absolutely. Or... Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a binary question, uh, Miko. Well, binary questions are okay. Um, do, do you sub subscribe to this or that? You know, we, we, we all talk like that. We all want to know a, a quick yes or no answer sometimes, but. Actually, I don't think it's just a yes or no answer. Um, we, we do need to um, embrace these tools. We do need to, um, in education speak, uh, investigate the affordances, the capabilities of these new technologies. But at the same time, we need to, we need to think through um, some of the consequences that are also emerging. And, and, and so the other thing I would say here is that, um, technologies and, and, and AI used to be, you know, AI used to be a, a, a sub-discipline of computer science, if you like, very techy, almost geeky, um, you know, in, in, in its domain. But now, as, as, as it's evolving, it's, it's kind of a, an interdisciplinary uh, pursuit. It needs to be tempered by the social sciences. Um, and, and, and so we, we, we need to look at how we can use AI ethically, responsibly, safely, um, you know, as a partnership with us, you know, working with it. So I, I'm a real fan of actually showing students how they can um, uh, make use of these tools. And, and, and I, I, I think some of the some of the surveillance tools that are out there uh, trying to catch students out for cheating are probably they're going to lose the game because they're, they're on the wrong footing. Thank you for that. So my last question, Dr. Mason, is that should there be uh, regulation when it's come to search tools and AI? Well, search tools specifically, I, I, I you know, um, I'm not, well, yes, I think there needs to be regulation with AI uh, uh, across the board. And I think... Um, uh, in a way, governments all around the world um, uh, are playing catch up here. Uh, even it's really interesting to notice that uh, all the um, all the people involved in the in the development of some of these uh, tools are already um, putting out communiques to say, let's pause, let's just stop this thing for a while until we can catch up as well. These these are the the, the people developing this stuff, but but. But governments all around the world are, 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 are all engaged in conversations at the moment as, as to how we can regulate uh, these things. And, and, a, and a great example I, was, I, I came across the other day was, was all about um, um, fake money, um, counterfeit money. You know, it, it's illegal. We know that. That's, that's, that's a pretty common sense kind of thing, right? Now, what, where we need to get to with this common sense um, uh, appraisal of, of our new um, uh, environment is that deep fakes and, and identity, you know, that identity theft, all these things should be illegal. And, and, and so we need ways to regulate um, uh, m misinformation in particular. Uh, and, and, and misrepresentation in particular, because I think these are the kinds of things that could could actually wreak havoc um, uh, uh, upon us in the in the coming years if we don't regulate. Thank you so much, uh, as I say, Professor Dr. John Mason of Charles Darwin University. That's it for today episode of There's a Glitch, and this is Miko Santos. See you next week for another episode. See ya.